Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy from Cichlid Bros. In today's video, we're going to be giving a care guide and a species profile on the Nicaraguan cichlid. I feel like this cichlid is a bit underrated in the hobby. It has a ton of color. And it's actually pretty compatible with a lot of American cichlids. And we're going to be walking through a full care guide on them today. Before we do that, please make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And guys, let's dive right in. Here is my 75 gallon aquarium which has my Nicaraguan cichlid. I've had her for a little over a year now and have kept others in the past and the first thing that stands out about them is their color. Nicaraguan cichlids have such a nice blend of yellow, red, and blues that they even have the common name of the macaw cichlid. One interesting note about the macaw is that the female actually has more color than the males typically. This here is a female Nicaraguan cichlid, which has some bright blue around the head and fins, and usually has nice pinkish red along the side. Males will stay a bit more yellowish orange and will also develop a nuchal hump, typically. Males also have spotting or spangling on their dorsal and caudal fins, while the females don't get this spotting. The males can reach up to nine to 10 inches in length, while the females stay about seven inches in total length my female here is about 5 inches now, so she'll continue to color up and grow over the next year or so. This is what my female looked like when I first got her about a year ago. You can see that she was tiny and had no color, so she really grew and put on a lot of good color over this past year. Due to their max size, I would recommend keeping them in a 55 gallon tank or larger. If you're going to have tank mates, I would say a 75 gallon tank would be a minimum. They should really be kept alone, in pairs, or even with similar sized Central and South American cichlids. There are some tank mate options that I would recommend with a large enough tank, and those would be the Jack Dempsey, the Firemouth, the Convict Cichlid, the Green Terror could possibly work, Rainbow Cichlids would be great, a few South American cichlids would also work well including the Severum, the Walru, the Electric Pulicara, and most Geophagus species. Plecos would do just fine with them, along with larger Tetras or Barbs, those could also possibly work. I would stay away from any of the small community fish, like Neon or Cardinal Tetras for example, as they would likely be eaten eventually. But because of the compatibility with some of these common cichlids like the Jack Dempsey and the Convict, along with its great color and temperament, I'm really surprised that the Macaw cichlid is not more popular or widespread in the hobby today. When it comes to their temperament, I would label them somewhere between peaceful and semi-aggressive. When I first got this female, she was pretty feisty, chasing a lot of the tank mates around, but she's really mellowed out over the past six months or so. Like most cichlids, they can be really territorial, and the Nicaraguan cichlids especially seem to defend one area of their tank as theirs, but as long as you have a large enough tank, it shouldn't be an issue. They will usually get more aggressive when breeding, and this territorial behavior will just increase. My female here actually laid eggs a few weeks ago in this little nook of the driftwood here. I recently had added this driftwood piece to the tank and the little spot in the driftwood there made a perfect spot for her to lay her eggs. Nicaraguans are pit spawners, meaning they will lay eggs in a small pit or a hole. Another interesting fact about them is that their eggs are non-adhesive which means they won't stick up against decor or glass, but rather they'll fall down in a pit together. In the wild, they dig large pits of the sand and river banks to lay their eggs, and due to this, they will definitely dig up mounds of sand in your tank or move around your gravel. I'm constantly leveling out my sand in this tank so that she's not piling up huge mounds up to my heater or even my filter. For the tank setup, I would recommend sand, driftwood, and rocks, giving them plenty of hiding spots and area to claim as their territory. 
Some live plants will be okay. I have Anubius and Crips in here that have done really well, but they will also eat or nibble at some plants on occasion. They are Central American cichlids, so when it comes to their water parameters, they do well in a wide range of pH, somewhere around six to eight, with slightly alkaline water. Um, they do a little bit better in hard water. And just your standard tropical temperatures, my tank here is right at 77 degrees. So anywhere between 75 and 82 degrees, I think is a good spot to aim for. These parameters would mimic the natural habitat of Central America. Although I wouldn't recommend chasing parameters and rather keeping things consistent and they'll do just fine. Their diet is pretty straightforward as well. They are omnivores and will readily accept flakes, pellets, and it's always good to mix in some frozen foods on occasion as well. They are very hardy cichlids, but as always, just try to give them the best care as possible. And if you follow some of the details in this video, they'll be a great cichlid for you to keep. Okay, so that does it for today's video. I hope you found that interesting or helpful. If you'd like to see any other care guides we've done, we'll leave a playlist down in the description below. And if you'd like to see a care guide on another cichlid that we keep, just leave those down in the comments down below. We read them all. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.